So in this instructional video, I'm going to teach you the outline format that you will use for your informative speech, and then I'm going to walk you through a sample outline for an informative speech to show you where everything goes, to show you all of the specific components that are required in the informative outline, and most important of all, I'm going to show you how to properly cite sources of evidence and research in your informative speech. So to do that, let's go to the modules. Okay, so we are on the informative speech module for this week, and we'll be on this module for next week. Your informative outlines are due at the end of this week, so let's see if we can come to a really good understanding of what exactly that outline should look like. So to do that, Let's go right here to the informative outline format. Let's go to that page and right on the top of the page, a couple different organizational patterns that you can use for the body of the speech. I'll come back to those in a second, but I want to go down here to the basic outline format for the informative speech. Also to right here, some examples of really good informative speaking topics. And some of you have struggled a little bit with, coming to an understanding of the difference between a good persuasive topic and a good informative topic. And so just remember, good informative topics begin by focusing on a noun. You can do your speech on a person, you can do it on a place, or you can do it on a thing, as long as that thing doesn't focus on an issue of controversy or trying to get us to prevent something or solve a particular problem, or if you're just focusing on the benefits of something. Those all work better as persuasive topics. Here, you see a lot of good examples of things that could be good informative topics, synthetic diamonds, vertical farms, and so on. Notice too, that with informative topics, they're usually you know one word or two words. If you have to use three or four words or more, then you're probably focusing on a persuasive topic. They're just a little harder to actually set up. So remember, examples of good informative topics begin by focusing on a now. Hey, I promise you this. You want an easy way to come up with a good topic for an informative speech, do it on a person, or walk around the house with a pad and a pen and start jotting down everything that you see. You'll come up with lots of really good ideas for an informative speech. And make sure that you watch the instructional video. This is on the, oh, excuse me, let's go right here on the informative topic selection. That's the second page in the module. Right here at the bottom, an instructional video where I break down the difference between good informative topics and good persuasive topics. So if you got an incomplete on that assignment and you can resubmit topics, make sure you take a look at this video. Also make sure you took, uh, take a look at the lecture four video, that's this week's instructional video, you'll find in the very last module. Okay, so let's go back to the basic outline format. So let's take a look at the outline. So the informative speech is a four to six minute speech, so a little bit longer than the critic speech. And you'll find when we look at the outline format that you'll use for the informative speech, is very similar to the outline format you use for the critic speech. We're just gonna add a couple more elements. So if we look at the introduction, okay, we're gonna start with an attention getter, just like we did with the critic speech. Topic sentence goes right after the attention getter. And you wanna make sure that you state your topic and establish it as the topic of your speech in the topic sentence. Once we get past the topic sentence, there should be no confusion at all as far as what the specific topic of your speech is going to be. The section that we're adding or the new component to the introduction for the outline format for the informative speech, we are going to add what we call the significant step. And so a good rule to follow in public speaking, if you're going to be speaking to the audience for longer than four to five minutes, then it's always good to give them a couple reasons in the introduction as to why it's to their benefit that they should listen to you yak for the next, you know, five, 10 minutes, however long the speech is. So in the significance section, typically 
you're going to have at least two sub points. The first should be your reason to the audience as to why you think this topic is significant and relevant to the audience. And then second, for the informative speech, you're required to have a minimum of four sources of evidence in the outline. And you're going to cite those sources in the outline when you actually deliver your speech. And that's a big difference between writing an outline for a speech and writing a paper that you're going to turn in for someone to read. Because with the speech, you don't really need a works cited page because you're not going to end the speech and then go, you have this you know, really big impactful ending and then you go, oh yeah, here's where I got the information. Now, it doesn't work that way. And obviously, because people aren't going to have your outline, there's no need for footnoting. So the only way the audience will know where you got your research is if you tell them during the actual conversational flow of the speech. These are what we call source citations. Your very first source citation required in the outline format for the informative speech should be the second sub point in the significance. And all you're doing there is in the significance, one, Here's my reason why I think this topic is significant and relevant to you. And here's a source, someone that's been published that is also suggesting this is a significant, relevant topic. That's probably still a little fuzzy. I'll show you specifically when we go to the sample outline and example of a source in the significance. But for now, realize that in the informative speech outline, we're adding a new component in the introduction. It's going to go right in the middle between the topic sentence and the significance. It's going to be the significance section. And here the goal is to give the audience a couple reasons why it's to their benefit to listen to you speak for the next few minutes. The significance is followed by the thesis statement. And your thesis statement, you want this to be a short, clear, concise statement and your thesis statement in this speech should really do two things. You should state your intent or your reason or purpose for speaking and then restate your topic. And so, because it's an informative speech, your purpose or intent is to inform and then you restate your topic. So in the next few minutes, I will get you better acquainted with, or in the next few minutes, I will inform you about, and then you restate your topic You'll end your speech with your preview of your main points. And in the preview, just like you did with the critic speech, you'll tell us the titles of your main points in the order in which you will cover them in the body of the speech. And let's jump to the body real quick. In this speech, the informative speech, you're required to have three main points and you get to come up with those main points. So essentially, you're going to take your main topic, break it into three subtopics, that will comprise the body of the speech. And if we jump to the top of the page, here are a couple different ways or suggested ways that you can organize the body of the speech. A real popular speech pattern, or excuse me, a real popular organizational pattern for a speech is to use the chronological pattern. So that means in the body of the speech, you'll talk about the past, the present, and the future. This works really good if you're doing your speech on any kind of invention. Let's say you're doing an informative speech on the latest Apple iPhone. All right, well, okay. So first main point, I'll talk about the history and the development of the iPhone. In the second main point, I'll talk about presently, how it works and all of the cool features that it has right now. And then my third main point, I can talk about what to expect from the iPhone in the future. So the chronological pattern works really well, especially if you're talking about any kind of thing that's been invented. Another really common, to or excuse me, another really common organizational pattern is the topical pattern. And that is where you take your topic and divide it into three subtopics. So an example of that, you could talk about the general background or definition or explaining how something came to be. Second, you could talk about how it works. Third, you could talk about specific applications or cases. 
So essentially with the topical pattern, those three subtopics completely up to you. And that's probably the more popular way to come up with three main points for a particular speech. And then too, if you do your speech on a place, you could use the social pattern where you just talk about different aspects of a particular place or, you know, cultural, economical, political. I mean, you could change that up and you could throw in uh, societal, you could even throw in like food, different things like that. But the social pattern focuses on specific entities, usually works really well if you're doing your speech on a particular place. So three ways that you can organize the body of the speech in the informative speech. And then the other thing that I want to point out about each main point, you want, you want to make sure that you have your specific title or heading for each main point. And the reason why that's important is, remember, once you have your topic and your thesis, right? I know my topic, I know my intent is to inform. Then put your speech together first by creating the body. And a good way to do that is to go get your research on the topic, then read through the research to figure out what you think the three main points should actually be. Now, organize the information from the research into those three main points. And in each main point, make sure that you include at least one source citation of evidence. And you want to make sure that you end your first main point with a transition that takes you into the next main point. That's another reason why writing the body of the speech first helps to write your transitions and make sure you get the headings in. I saw a couple of you and some of the outlines that you turned in already, you just put main point number one, right? No, put the actual title. So then when I write my transition, I can go, all right, now that we've learned about the history and background, let's next focus on current applications. So it just makes it easier to write your transitions when you have the headings in the in each main point. All right, so in the body of the speech, you're going to have three main points. Each main point, you're required to have a at least one source citation. You'll have a transition after main point one, a transition after main point two. You do not need a transition at the end of main point three. And then in the conclusion, exactly the same as the critic speech, Review or summarize your three main points. So here you're just going to state the three main points that you covered in the speech. And another reason why it's important to write the body first, then write your introduction and conclusion together, because you can just take your preview right here and put it here and just change the tense, right? In the preview, we're going to focus on this, that, and the other here in the review. We just focused on this, that, and the other. Restate your topic and significance, and then end your speech with a strong sense of finality. A good way to do that is to refer back to the opening attention getter. So here, if you take a look at the outline format for the informative speech, introduction pretty much the same as a critic speech. We're just adding the significance section right here. That'll involve two subpoints. Your reason why the topic is significant a source that says the topic is significant as well. And then we'll have three main points instead of two in the body. You get to create the main points that you want to discuss in the body of your informative speech. All right, now let's just go right down here to the bottom. We're gonna click next. We'll go to the next page. And now we'll take a look at the sample outline. All right. All right, so here we take a look at the sample informative speech outline. And so essentially what I just showed you with the outline format, now we're going to take a look at the outline with all of the specific information filled in. And use the sample outline when you're constructing your outline. And when you're done with your outline before you submit it, compare it to the sample outline. And so you want to make sure that your outline is formatted identical, identical to the sample outline. So here, let's take a look at the introduction. And this is a speech on instant replay or replay review. So here we have our attention getter. 
Imagine being Tom Brady. Little story there leads us into the topic. And notice how simple the topic sentence is. This brings me to the topic of my speech replay review. So in the topic sentence, we're indicating that here's the topic by mentioning the topic in the actual topic sentence, and then we're stating our topic clearly and concisely. Now we move into the significant section. So here we have our first point. Replay reviews have revolutionized sports today, allowing athletes, coaches, and fans to see the correct call and choose the right winner, all right? And that just came from the person who created the outline. Here's my reason why I think the speech is significant. Then goes on to add in 2013 in the NFL, 423 plays were reviewed of which 43% were reversed. So we're saying, okay, uh, just about half the time the call has been reversed. That's a pretty important reason to have replay review. But we also finish it off with a source citation. Someone who's been published is saying this is a significant, relevant topic. So furthermore, according to Chris Haney in ESPN Magazine, November 7th, 2020, replay reviews have had a 99.5% efficiency rate of calls during game play. So essentially we're saying, look, this has been a pretty significant and an important entity that we've been able to use to make sure that the calls are correct almost 100% of the time, all right? So, also notice, with the source citation, there's three components of a source citation. And you might wanna write this down, remember this. So, in a source citation, when you're citing a source in a speech, you need to tell us three things. The name of the person who said it, the title of the publication, and the date it was published. So here, I've got Chris Haney. That's the name of the dude that wrote the article in the publication ESPN Magazine. Notice too, I'm not telling you the title of the article. I'm only giving you the title of the publication. And the reason why is, look, you know, you've got to be able to deliver this speech and you want to be able to remember your source citations easily. And so the titles of an article are usually much longer than the title of the publication. And if I have the title of the publication, the name of the person that wrote it, I can easily find the actual article. So when you're citing a source, name of the person, title of the, of the publication. So that's the name of the magazine, the name of the newspaper according to the San Francisco Chronicle, according to the New York Times. It could be the name of a journal. It could be the name of a documentary that you watch. It's the name of the publication. If you get information off a website, then you would tell us the title of the website or the name of the website, not the web address. That's usually longer, harder to remember. So here you want the name of the person title of the publication or the name of the website and the specific date the information was published. And I'm going to say this a lot now that we're getting into research and using research in our speeches. And the earlier you learn this in, the, in your college career, the better. Rely on published sources to get your research when you're doing college level work. Only go to the internet and websites as a last resort. And the reason why is if you're getting research off the internet, it's much harder to find the name of the person who said it and the date the information was set. I need to change this too. I just saw a little typo right there. Yeah, November doesn't have two E's. So you've got to remember that when you're citing a source, you want the information to be published because it's easier to find the name and the actual date. And I know a lot of you have learned different ways like to tell the difference between information you can use from a website and information you shouldn't use from a website. And a lot of that has to do with what is it a .com or a .net or a .edu. To me, I think it's way easier 
to just decide whether or not I'm going to use information from a website will be determined by if I know who said it and when it was said. If I don't know those two things, I'm not going to use that information. And you're also much better off learning to use academic databases and search engines like EBSCOhost, ProQuest, Google Scholar, because you never have to worry about finding out who said it or when it was said. And if you aren't familiar with those databases, then go to the library online at Solano Community College and you want to get familiar with all of the databases that are available to you for free as a student at Solano Community College. And if you've never used those databases, set up an appointment with the reference librarian online. You can even use this assignment. If you just tell, hey, I'm doing an informative speech in POF's public speaking class. I'm doing an informative speech on this topic. I need to have at least four different source citations. Yes, and I want four different sources, not one source repeated four times in the speech. And they'll help you do the research. They'll show you how to navigate all of those databases. The sooner, the sooner you learn that in your college career, the easier research is going to be. Look, most of the time when you're in a class and you go, okay, you've got a 10 page research paper coming up in a month. It's not like, oh, cool. It's like, all right, that's two weeks of my life. I'm never going to get back. But we waste a lot of time doing research because we're not using the best databases to get us the information that we actually need. So learn to rely on databases that will take you to information where you're guaranteed that the information is already published because you don't want to rely on information from websites if you don't know who said it or when it was said. All right. And so hopefully you understand the importance of having a source citation in the significance and the importance of published source citations in an actual speech that you're giving. Also notice too, that the way that the source is plugged in, I'm going to say this in the speech. So it's not like I'm gonna put this information in and then just kind of put my source here or source here, right? And maybe mention it later. No, work your source citations into the flow of the speech. And you always wanna cite your source before you present information from the source because you're kind of establishing the credibility of, of the information before you say the actual information. So first source goes right here in the significance. Also too, it's not a hyperlink, right? The audience isn't going to have your outline and so they can just click on a hyperlink to get the information. So we don't need hyperlinks, we don't need footnotes, just tell us your source as an according to and you're going to write it out so it flows in a conversational manner during the actual speech. Then we go from the significance right into the thesis statement. And again, with the thesis, all we're doing is adding our overall purpose and restating our topic. So very similar to the topic sentence. And I like the thesis emanating right from the significance because it's kind of like, because this is such an important, significant, relevant topic, Therefore, the purpose of my speech is to inform you about, and then I restate the actual topic. And if you want to use a synonym, the purpose of my speech is to get you better acquainted with or to enhance your understanding of, that's fine. But in a thesis statement, short, simple, to the point, you want to state your intent for speaking and you restate your topic. Then you go to the preview of your main points which should be really easy to write if you've already written the body of the speech and you have your headings in as the title for each main point. So now when I write my preview, I look to the body and I just, okay, main point one, title main point one, main point two, title main point two, main point three, title main point three, and then I just add, so in the next few minutes we will and when you get to your conclusion, it's another, I mentioned this before, when you write your conclusion and introductions together, you just change the tense right here in the, conclude, in the concluding summary. So instead of we will, 
here's what we have just done as we see right here in the review in the last few minutes i address and we just restate the main points again all right so now in the body of the speech you plug in your information both what you know about your topic and information from the research that you've done on the topic and then just make sure in one of the sub points in that main point we have a source citation so you need at least one source citation in each of your three main points and you kind of pick and choose where you're actually going to put that so here according to again tie our name of the person Tom Verducci in an article in I don't say the name of the article in an article in title of the publication Sports Illustrated and then I give the date it was published then I state the information from the actual source then when I get all my information plugged into my first main point I'll end that first main point with a transition and a good transition always does two things it tells us the title of the main point we're leaving and the title of the main point we're going into the first replay while seemingly minor unlock the door to our next point of consideration replay reviews today and so we've got a nice smooth transition and those transitions are so important in a speech if you just leave out the transition the audience will think that you just have one big point in the body they'll never know when you go from one main point to the next unless you tell them that's why transitions are so important and realize too when it comes to your topic sentence your thesis statement your headings for your main points your transitions and your summary or review you want them short concise and clear these are not the places to be wordy because the whole reason that we have those components in the outline is to keep the audience on track and to add organization and structure to the presentation so we want that stuff to be clear and easy to follow so don't try to make another argument or another point about a main point in the review right just tell us the titles of the main points that you cover all right so now once we look at the body of the speech we have three main points each of the main points have a minimum of one source citation and we've got transitions at the end of main point one and main point two and then in the conclusion we just summarize our three main points restate our thesis end your speech with a strong sense of finality and a good way to do that is to tie that ending back into your opening attention data. So, as you're constructing your outlines, you want to be looking at this outline. You want your outline to look the same. And I don't mind, and a few of you even did this for your critic speech. You can take this sample outline, all right? Just copy and paste it to an actual document on your laptop or computer. Now, just take all the content out. So I'm going to erase this line, put in sentence one for my attention getter, sentence two. And so just take out all of the content specific to this speech and plug your stuff in. That ensures that the outline is formatted correctly. And I don't mind that because I'm a big believer in repeating something or doing something, applying something is the best way to learn something, right? Practical application is the key to really learning about a topic or an issue. So if you want to copy this outline, take out the content, plug in your own, cool, that will work. Just make sure you change the titles of your main points. All right. So there you have it. There's the outline format. This is exactly what you want your outline to look like when you submit your outline for the informative speech and if there's something that's incorrect with the outline, I will refer you to look to the sample outline to go ahead and correct that. So you want to make sure that you're familiar with the outline format. All right.